Pat Kurtz's funeral that will be at 2 o'clock this afternoon. We continue to keep uh, that family in our prayers as well as all who mourn the loss of a loved one. Please stand as we prepare for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing to him. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. You may be seated. Luther's small catechism, the introduction to the Lord's Prayer. The traditional version, Our Father who art in heaven. The contemporary version, Our Father in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God wants to attract us 
so that we come to believe he is truly our father and we are truly his children in order that we may ask him boldly and with complete confidence just as loving children ask their loving father. The first lesson is from the 17th chapter of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness and an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Here ends the reading. Please join me as we read Psalm 1 responsibly. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season. With leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. It is the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is due. The second lesson is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the, for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came down the mountain with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. 
Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. In today's gospel lesson, we hear that crowds are flocking to hear Jesus and receive his healing. There seem to be two important groups following Jesus wherever he goes. One group is the twelve, chosen especially by Jesus, and who are named just before our gospel text. The other group appears to be more people who are following Jesus. Luke calls this group disciples in our gospel lesson. We are also told that a great multitude of people from Jerusalem and Judea as well as the coastal areas around Tyre and Sidon were gathered. But it is to the twelve and the larger group of disciples that Jesus is directing his teaching in our gospel lesson today. Jesus' teaching revolves around four conditions that people find themselves in and which the disciples will particularly experience in their lives of ministry. Being poor, being hungry, mourning, and being hated, excluded, reviled, and defamed. It is clear people don't normally aspire to be in these conditions. For example, how many buy lottery tickets hoping to lose? None want to be full, poor, all want to win and be rich. Nobody desires to be hungry. None want to mourn. Rather, we want to be entertained and feel good. None like to be hated, excluded, ridiculed, talked about in a derogatory manner. Yet Jesus tells his disciples, blessed are you who are poor, woe to you who are rich. Blessed are you who are hungry, woe to you who are full now. Blessed are you when you weep, woe to you who are laughing. Blessed are you when you are hated, excluded, reviled, and defamed on account of the Son of Man. Woe to you when all speak well of you. What Jesus is doing is being clear about what his disciples will face in their lives and their ministries. Author F. R. Maltby summed up the message like this. Jesus promised his disciples that they would be completely fearless, absurdly happy, and constantly in trouble. Those who follow are going to be the poor, the hungry, mourners, Those who are rich, filled, and laughing aren't 
going to have room and time for God in their lives. The disciples can expect people to attack them by attacking their reputations as well as their message. What could Jesus' words possibly mean for us today? Let's retranslate his words so we can understand a little better. The overall meaning of Jesus' teaching is that his followers are to live in the present, guided by the values and practices of God's coming kingdom. Exactly what we pray for in the second and third petitions of the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is saying, if you set the goal of your life on the things of this world and employ all your energies to get the things which the world says are worthy, you'll get them. But that's all you'll ever get. You've had it. But, if you set the goal of your life on being obedient to God and loyal to Jesus and employ all your energies toward such obedience and loyalty, then you can be sure you are prone to suffer all kinds of trouble in this life, but also true blessing in the kingdom of God and eternal life. The values of the kingdom of God are much different from what the world says is valuable. This is made so because Jesus died for those who needed God to save them, to make them rich in the things of God, to fill them, to comfort them with the things of the kingdom, to make them worthy and members of the kingdom of God. It's important to note Jesus' statement about being hated, excluded, reviled, and defamed on the account of the Son of Man. Remember he is speaking to the disciples, those inside his circle of followers, about how the world, those currently outside the circle of belief, will receive them until they finally commit themselves to believe in, belief in Jesus through the disciples' witness. Jesus is not talking about how those inside the community of faith treat one another. Jesus is not giving us permission to hate, exclude, revile, and defame other believers. In fact, Jesus is calling and pointing to a new community that lives differently because it is founded in the grace and life of God through Jesus Christ. Within the community of faith, within the body of Christ, we are to be building and repairing relationships, not tearing down each other. When we do need the challenge, the goal is that we together become more faithful to Jesus, to challenge and help each other so that we as individual people and that we as a community are more faithful to Jesus. We go back to where we began the, the message this day. I told you people were flocking to see Jesus, to be where he was. We are told just before our gospel lesson that Jesus had gone up on a mountain to pray. In our gospel lesson, we hear the people had gathered on a level place at the base of the mountain, anticipating where Jesus would come down. In other places in the gospels, we hear that people saw Jesus get into a boat and go out into the Sea of Galilee, and that they would rush ahead along the shore to get to where they anticipated that Jesus would come ashore. Thinking about this 
relation to how we faithfully seek to be where Jesus is. I remembered a quote from Hockey Hall of Famer Wayne Gretzky. In explaining his enormous success, the always modest great one replied, I just skate to where the puck is going to be. But that's not as easy as it sounds. Watch even now, and you will see that most professional hockey players race to catch up with the puck, not to be there when it gets there. I'm sure most of us would agree that we should follow Jesus. How many of us are willing to pay such attention that we rush to where Jesus is going in order to meet him when he gets there? Jesus told his disciples they were going into a world that sought instant gratification in things they thought would fill their lives now. It's just the same with us. Watch the commercials on this Super Bowl Sunday and see what glittering things are promised that we are told will fill and satisfy us now. Jesus urges his disciples to something more than things that stuff us and gratify us for a moment came across a powerful poem that's an illustration of how too many people want God on their terms. It goes like this. I'd like to buy five dollars worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or distract my sleep, but just enough to equal a warm cup of milk or a snooze in the sunshine. I don't want enough of God to make me love the outcast or pick beats with a migrant. I want ecstasy, not transformation. I want the warmth of the womb, not new birth. I want a part of the eternal in a paper sack. I'd like to buy five dollars worth of God, please. But Jesus demands more than five dollars worth of God. We are more to him than that. Jesus taught that when a seed falls into the earth, what emerges from the ground is something quite different from what that original seed was. So when we die and fall into the earth, what emerges is not our old self, but a new creation, eternally bound to God. If our destiny is eternal life with God, then it's now time to skate to where God is, to learn to love, even as Jesus loves. Max Licato writes humorless, humorless, humorously of a transformation in his life. He writes, most of my life I have been a closet slob. I was slow to see the logic of neatness. Why make up a bed if you're going to sleep it in again tonight? Life is too short to match your socks. Just buy longer pants. And then I got married. Denilyn was so patient, he writes. She said she didn't mind my habits, if I didn't mind sleeping outside. <laughs> I enrolled in a 12-step program for slobs. My nose was reintroduced to the fragrance of pine saw. I was a new man. I could go three days without throwing a sock behind the couch. But then came the moment of truth. Denilyn went out of town for a week. 
I figured I'd be a slob for six days and clean on the seventh. But something strange happened. I couldn't relax with dirty dishes in the sink. When I saw an empty potato chip sack on the floor, I bent over and picked it up. What had happened to me? Simple, he writes. I'd been exposed to a higher standard. My friends, Jesus is our higher standard. And the closer we are to him, the more ready we are to live the life he wants us to live. To embrace the unbraced. To forgive those that don't deserve it. To live according to standards of the kingdom rather than the values of the world. We are skating to the place Jesus wants us to be with him. A place where we are completely fearless, absurdly happy, and constantly in trouble. But we're there for the glory of God. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those who trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessings into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer, especially those who are ill or in need of healing. Marcus Brazier, Waldo Neenstead, Joanne Hundemer, Bobby Bredar, Tom Brinkmar, Mark Hundemer, Travis Fisher, Barely Goldberg, Betty Holt, Arlen Nagley, Tammy Browner, Edna Weiss, Diane Bainemann, Teresa Rhodes, Lutz Melhorn, Ike Porter, Wayne Dean, Linda Green, and others we now name. Grant peace to those who have lost loved ones especially the family of Dennis Landaway, yes. the family of Pat Kurtz, Pat. the family of Butch Hegemar, Butch. the family of Robert Contreras, Robert. and others we name. And also those who are dying, God of grace, renew this congregation in our shared mission as we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you, especially those we name in our hearts. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.